few days ago on April 9th, Neuralink tweeted a video of their subject monkey, Pager, playing Pong with his mind. Elon Musk quickly followed up by saying, a monkey is literally playing a video game telepathically using just a brain chip. This video is pretty incredible and Neuralink's first brain computer interface application. This is the first time that a user of the Neuralink Neuralase is actually controlling something entirely with their mind. Pretty mind-blowing stuff, right? Stick around and I will show you exactly how this device works and a little bit more from the company. Hello, I'm Harrison Canning of BCI Guy, and today we're going to talk about how MindPong actually works. But first, a little bit of background. Neuralink first became public in 2017 when Elon Musk commissioned an article in the popular blog, Wait, But Why? The article, titled Neuralink and the Brain's Magical Future, was digestible but long at 135 pages if you printed it all the way out. And it told us about Elon's vision for the company. He said in the long term, he wants to use it to connect minds to machines, adding a tertiary processing layer on the brain, allowing us to connect with AI. This falls into his whole thing about saving humanity from AI and stuff. Before we can get to the cognitive enhancement stuff, Neuralink is going to focus their efforts in the medical fields, curing brain diseases, helping people in locked in states, people who can't communicate or move, etc. This is the typical route that neurotech companies and researchers have traditionally taken. Yes, actually a lot of this stuff has already been done before, but I will still tell you about why Neuralink is specifically special. Now, neurotechnologists were skeptical of the claims at first, but haven't we learned not to doubt Elon Musk at this point? In Q3 of 2019, Neuralink showed the world what they had been working on for the first time. Their device was a novel approach to invasive brain implants, which traditionally consisted of rigid electrode arrays of 100 needles pushed into the brain. This approach can puncture blood vessels, and it's very hard to position the array. The brain also doesn't like to sit still. It moves around as you move around. So this means that these devices can cause some scarring as you move around and the device stays still. Neuralink uses a robot to implant electrodes individually into the brain. Since the electrode position can be carefully selected, the robot can avoid puncturing blood vessels. Each electrode is placed on a thread, meaning that it can move around the brain. The thread connects back to the main module. This reduces brain scarring. This approach also means that implantation can be highly scalable. This was a cool concept, but it remained to be seen how this would actually work. But in Q3 of 2020, we got our answer. Neuralink's test pig, named Gertrude, gave us a window into her mind. Neuralink showed off, in real time, the wireless transmission of brain signals collected from 1,024 electrodes in her brain. Finally, some proof that this actually works. That brings us to today, Mind Pop. Neuralink released a video where Pager, a monkey outfitted with their device, can be seen absolutely slaying at Pong. In the first part of the video, Pager uses a joystick to learn the motions and train the algorithm. Once the computer learns how Pager's brain controls the joystick, the joystick is disconnected. Pager still uses it, not realizing that he is now playing telepathically. I mean, isn't this stuff just so cool? Anyway. Pager and his newly acquired telekinesis powers learn to play Pong with just his mind. So that's enough background, but how does this actually work? Well, as I mentioned before, this is not the first time that something like this has been done. There are plenty of examples of primates and even humans using direct brain implants to control complex robotic arms to hit targets and feed themselves. This video from Johns Hopkins shows a man using two arms to cut a slice of bread and feed it to himself. And yes, this is entirely from his brain. There are plenty of examples of subjects moving a cursor around with their mind, which is effectively what Pager was doing. So while I can't say for sure what technique they used for Pager, it is likely the same that was used in all of these previous experiments. All of these devices, be it arms or a cursor use, use something called population coding to translate thoughts into action. To understand this, let's go to the primary motor cortex in the brain, located here. This region translates intention into commands that get sent to the spinal cord and eventually to the muscles to allow you to move. Neurons in this area aren't responsible for coordinating individual muscle fibers like you might guess. This is the job of the spinal cord. Instead, groups of neurons tell muscles what direction they want to move, which is later translated into binary muscle control. Each group has a favorite direction when you want to move there. To visualize this, let's pretend that there are eight clusters of neurons responsible for moving your right arm. When you want to move your arm up, 
This group of neurons gets strongly activated telling your arm to go up. Same with down, left, and right. During this, the other neurons might be firing occasionally, but the average direction is very clear. If two populations of neurons fire equally, a movement vector is drawn between them that represent the movement. Unfortunately, where the populations are in the right arm part of the brain differs from person to person and monkey to monkey, so the computer needs to learn where they are. This is what's going on when Pager is using the joystick to control the little dot on the screen. Pager's brain is buzzing with activity as he moves his arm. Over time, the computer learns what patterns represent different directions as Pager moves his arm. Eventually, the computer learns which movements are controlled by which groups of neurons, and the joystick can be disconnected. There is one really special thing that I want everyone to pay close attention to. Do you see how when Pager is playing Pong, he is no longer moving his arm with the movement? This is really cool because it means that his brain has learned how to control the computer without moving the arm as was originally associated. This means that you can essentially add functionality to a healthy brain without giving up anything. Doc Ock arms, anyone? So this stuff might not be all that new, but that doesn't mean that it's any less exciting. Neuralink has demonstrated remarkable pace and results with an entirely new interface. All those examples I showed likely use the Utah Ray, which generally is a rigid block of only 100 electrodes. It isn't all that scalable or robust. Neuralink's device, by contrast, will likely last much longer, is more specific, and more scalable. If all of those amazing things can be done with just 100 to 300 electrodes, just imagine what can be done with 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, etc. This is why Neuralink is so special, and why we can all thank Elon Musk for his innovative mind, vision, and deep pockets for making this happen. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this type of content, please let us know. We always appreciate the feedback. We also have a free course offered on our YouTube channel, so if you're curious to learn more about neurotechnology or brain-computer interfaces, take a look. It's called Foundations of Neurotechnology. If you're interested in Neuralink news, take a look at our friends over at Neuropod for frequent updates on the company's progress. And finally, 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 if you like this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon or by buying our merch at BCIGuys backslash support so that we can actually feed our audio and video editors. They're just getting table scraps and they're a little tired of it. See you in the next video.